Hello and thank you for tuning in. My name is Hasib Rodani. I'm the VP of Products at Infinite Systems. Today we will show you how easy it is to set up our data mobility switch, which we call the DMS, in a real environment. And Umer Hutboy, standing here, he is, who is our technical marketing manager, will be helping us with the setup. He's going to take care of one data center, if you will, and I will take care of the other. So I'm going to start with the DMS, which is sitting right here. It's sitting on a box. Uh, somebody else has uh, unpacked it for me. I'm going to pick it up, bring it here, and before I start any of this work, I'm going to start the stopwatch running on this iPad here, which is going to track how long it takes for us to bring the box up here, power it up, run a test without us, and run two tests with us. So with that, I'm going to start the timer. Here we go. So the DMS is a two-year appliance, as you can see here. There's ports up front, there's power source at the back. So I just power it up, and before I configure the management IP, I'm going to do two things. One is I will, I will, I will I'll just plug in the port, uh, the, the interface uh, the connectors, and I will show you what the, what the deployment looks like. So let me do the connectivity first. So one gig copper for management. 10 gig SFPs for the fiber connectivity. Connect the, the actual fiber. So it's wired up. Let me take a couple minutes and talk about the actual setup. So we have two Linux servers. One client, one server, really. We have two DMSs. So these are the two DMSs right here. One here and one here. And we're using a VAN emulator from a company called Apposite. So this, this Apposite device, this is a 10 gig emulator. We're using this to emulate a 10 gig VAN with 50 millisecond latency. So it's a reasonable distance, say, you know, California to the Midwest. Okay? So I'm waiting for Mary to tell me if the boxes are ready. Yes, they are. So I'm going to walk over and configure the management IP via the LCD on the box. That's it. It's that easy. So with the management IPs plugged in, I'm going to connect to the to the opposite and make sure the the, uh, the the latency and everything is correct. So it's set up for a 10 gig, 25 millisecond delay, so 25 this way, 25 the other way, so 50 millisecond round trip. I'm also going to connect to my local DMS here. Okay, so I'm logged in. Okay, and before I start the configuration, let me show you what the status is without the DMS in the picture. So here's an emulation for the client. Let me ping the server first. So notice that the time that ping shows is 50 milliseconds, which reflects the actual WAN, which is configured for 50 milliseconds. I'll stop that and very quickly run a single iperf connection to show you what the what the performance is without us on this web. So Omer, can you start an iperf server please? Sure. I'll, I'll configure it on port 5001. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. All right, it's ready. Here we go. So single connection without us on a 50-some millisecond run. So notice that the, the bandwidth, the TCP payload bandwidth, that IPERF reports is about 10 megabits. 
this should be running at a gig, right? This is a single connection. It could have been running much faster, but on a 10 gig link, all the single connection can do is 10 megabits, which is which is horrible, right? Now let's see what we would do when we were in the picture. So what I would do is I'll turn this off and start configuring the box. And you can follow me on the screen here. So I will configure a service class at the first step. A service class is very much like an access control list. I'll call it Infinita and, uh, for any end. Premium traffic, enable for reduction, and the service class itself is enabled. Okay. Next, I will configure bandwidth constraints. So I'll make this a 10 gig in and 10 gig out system. Configured. Now that that's out of the way, I will, I will enable this box for acceleration. So notice that this icon here became green because the box is enabled for acceleration. I'll wait for Omega to tell me that he's ready as well. And then we will start. And what I will do as a starting point is run the same test that I ran before without us to see what the, what the, what the comparison is. So same exact test, we start that in the little bit. Omer, can you start in my first session, please? Okay, I first is ready. Okay. Here we go. There we go, sorry, my mistake. Okay. So notice that iBerg is supporting about 980 megabits, and let's look at the UI. So the dashboard noticed two things. One is the reduction. So notice that the reduction right now is about 92.5%, which is incredible. Immediately as the connection started, reduction is that high. And secondly, the throughput is 1.02 gigabits. This is a single connection. 1.2 gigabit, 1.02 gigabits. Compare this to the 10 megabits that we saw right before this test without us. So we went from 10, gig, 10 megabits to 1 gig. That's a 100 time improvement. That is incredible. No product other can do this. Nobody can even come close to this with a single connection or with many, many connections. And to prove that point, I'm going to run what do, you, what do you think? How many connections should I run over? Let's run 20 connections. 20. So I'll run 20 connections using the same tool. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. Mary, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. So we run 20 connections, and let me point out that the servers we're using, they are, you know, they're not they're not really high five servers, so you know they can't get to 10 gig, maybe they can get to 6, 7, whatever gig. So we'll see how fast they run. So now, let's look at the UI. Okay. All right, so, so let's start with the, with the reduction. So look at the, the this, this right here. Is that visible on your screen? Excellent. So notice that the reduction, again, is 92.5 plus percent, which is, again, incredible. With that many connections, immediately the, the compression, uh, sorry, the reduction goes up to that high levels, but more importantly, right now we're doing 8.38 gigabits. This is with only 20 connections. We could have done more because this is a 10 gig box. It's just you know I, I don't have a uh, you know a server right now that can do 10 gig, right? But but this proves the point, right? With a single connection, we did one gig. With 20 connections, because of the limitation of the server, we got to 8.4 gig. Again, nothing in this business, nothing comes close to this. Right? With this kind of a product, you know you can convert a one gig band, for example, to a five six gigabit band. You don't need to upgrade anymore, right? And uh, by the way, let's see how long it's been. So if you can look at the stopwatch. How long, how long has it been? 8 minutes and 20 seconds. So I'm going to stop it here. So 8 minutes and 27 seconds. Let's look at, let's think about what we did. Of course I talked a lot, right, so that takes some time, right? I turned on the box, I talked about the deployment, I did one test without us, I did two tests with us, and all of this while I configured the boxes. So if you kind of order, you know, even it out, you know, our, the, the actual time it took for us to deploy is much less than eight, 8 minutes. But this is in itself, this is remarkable. I mean, imagine how easy it is for you to eva evaluate a DMS. You know, 10 minutes, you're done. Right? It'll prove a point to you. And that's the point we're making here in this video. This is hands down the easiest box to configure in this business for 
what we call hyperscale branch into data center once. Thank you very much.